<coughs> Hello, my name is Michael Hansen. Um, I'm a master student at uh, the University of Copenhagen. I am currently writing my master thesis in gravitational lensing around or in galaxy clusters. So the notion about gravity is, is a well part of, of what I do uh, every day. All right. I have previously, uh, previously done a video about this, <clears throat> but I thought that some of the aspects of it was very vague, and I don't think that I really didn't explain uh, myself very good, so I decided to make another video. Um, the, the, the subject is that a guy called Brian Mullen has made some videos and that he's put on YouTube where he explains why uh, airplanes can land on airfields. This is the first video. He thinks that if you have Earth, a spherical object that is turning around uh, on its central axis, um, and you have airplanes taking off and landing because of that constant motion of the Earth, uh, the airplane shouldn't be able to um, land. Uh, I, I want to show in this video where it is that he's wrong, both in in regards to the frame of reference he's using, but also in the regards of the vector calculations he's doing. All right, so let's recap the the main part of his argument about these airplanes. All right, so he says that well we have two airplane, uh, sorry. Two airfields, I think he calls this uh, LAX and this is JAX, Jacksonville. It, it doesn't really matter. But then an airplane takes off, reaches cruising speed, which he puts to be 600 miles per hour, and as the Earth is turning in this direction uh, with 900 miles per hour, he assumes that the, the, the total velocity of this aeroplane must be 1500 miles per hour. Alright, no problems here. So, then he goes over to this part where he says, well, in order, before the plane turns, it, ha it, it wants to slow down in order to keep the 900 miles per hour. But it can, because then it won't, would have to fly with a speed of zero, and that's not possible. <coughs> so he says, well, it goes down to 300 miles per hour and then you still have the 900 miles per hour that gives a total velocity of 1200 miles per hour that is not strictly incorrect but let's go on and then comes the problem he says well the aeroplane is going in this direction down here with 300 miles per hour but going in this direction as it turns with 1200 miles per hour and anyone, I would say that anyone that has had just basic knowledge about vector calculations can see instantly that this is wrong. He is decomposing his vectors wrong. What he should have been doing was, if this is the aeroplane, then it is going in this direction with 900 miles per hour. And in this direction with 300 miles per hour. And so the total velocity of this system is this velocity that is 1200 miles per hour. So that is just simply wrong and his argument goes that because the velocity this way is 1200 and Earth is going with 900 miles per hour, the aeroplane should be taking the straight course like this. Now this is wrong. It is simply wrong calculations. It's calculated wrongfully. Alright, so the next problem is that he says, well, we are stationary observers seeing this system. <clears throat> Alright, let's assume that. Then he is correct. But he, then this, these calculations, the total velocities are correct. But he's forgetting something. He's forgetting that everything here is moving in this direction. If you look at it from above, a stationary 
observer that doesn't use the Earth as a reference frame. Um, then these numbers are correct, but the whole system will be moving. Now, if you're using Earth as a reference frame, and that is what we usually do when we do these things, <clears throat> we don't need these numbers because we know the whole system is going in that direction with 900 miles per hour. So the only really velocities that we need in this system is to look at the velocity of the plane. And since it will be going in this direction constantly with 900 miles per hour, and the Earth will be moving in this direction constantly with 900 miles per hour, and we use Earth as a reference frame, then the 900 miles per hour is not necessary to account for. Let me try to, because this is probably a little a, a, a more complicated uh, example, because you have an aeroplane moving with speed, and you have Earth, you have that aeroplane moving in relation to another object, the Earth, that is also moving with a, with a speed. So let's take a more simple example. <clears throat> instead. Alright, we have the surface of the Earth and we have a very ugly, horrible helicopter. Going up, let's just say it's um, 100 meters, because I'm from Denmark, we use the, use the metric system, so it's 100 meters above the surface. Now, <clears throat> Let's be careful about our frame of reference. Let's take the first frame of reference, Earth. F1 is Earth. Then the helicopter, the Earth is going in this direction, let's just say that, with 900 miles per hour. But the helicopter is also going in this direction with 900 miles per hour. Now, as this is true, and we're using Earth as a reference frame, this is ambiguous. We don't need it. All we have to do is look at the Earth, look at the helicopter, and see that the helicopter will be constantly hovering above this flag. And as long as the helicopter doesn't go forward or backwards, it will remain hovering there. Now, here comes the part that's true. If we use another frame of reference, Let's, for instance, say outside of Earth or the Sun. But we're using the Sun as the reference frame, but keeping still to Earth. Uh, keep sorry, keeping close to Earth so we can see the helicopter. Then it's completely correct that the helicopter will be moving in this direction with 900 miles per hour, and the Earth, the flag, will be moving in this direction with 900 miles per hour. So for an observer, seeing the total, that the whole Earth and its helicopter, the helicopter, which is here, will be going around like that. That is correct. But it is not correct to begin to add these vector values together and then assume, <coughs> if you do it right, that you can just say that the plane will be going or the helicopter will be going in all sorts of crazy ways. Now even if, if we don't believe the math here, it wouldn't make logical sense for anyone that a helicopter would go straight up, hover above this flag, and then the flag would start to move and the helicopter will move in another right direction because the earth is moving in this direction. I don't think anyone had ever experienced that and it would make it utterly impossible for anyone to just land or take off with a helicopter because you would have clear sights for miles in order to be sure that you didn't hit anything. So this is why Brian Mullen is wrong in his assumption that you can use these kind of calculations to infer that the Earth cannot be around a spherical object moving around a central axis.